Well, good morning and welcome to our online service this Sunday, the 13th of October. It's Harvest Festival today. I do hope you are enjoying the weather. You've enjoyed some food, maybe if it's past breakfast time for you, and you have been able to give thanks to God for all the good food around us, all the harvest blessings that come from God. Today we'll be exploring what harvest might mean for us and God's goodness to us, all the while singing some fantastic harvest songs. So let's dig in as we worship God, hear from the Bible and pray together. And we start with our opening acclamation. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And so we sing our first hymn and it's Harvest Festival. And what could we have other than we plough the fields and scatter? and scatter the good seed on the land but it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand He sends the snow in winter the warmth to swell the grain the breezes and the sunshine and soft refreshing rain all good gifts around His children He gives our daily bread All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord for all His love We thank Thee then, O oh Father time and the harvest, our life, our health, our food. Accept the gifts we offer for all thy love imparts, and what thou most desirest, our humble, thankful hearts. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above, then thank the Surround us, ascend from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord for all His love. One of the best harvest hymns. To be honest, I'm not too sure of many other harvest hymns than that one, but uh, we, uh, we love it anyway. Our reading this morning is from Luke chapter 12, verses 16 to 30. And he, Jesus, told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. 
Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens, they do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the wild flowers grow. They do not labour or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the fields, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it, for the pagan world runs after such things, and your father knows that you need them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, as we gather online today and in person as well, we gather in this season of harvest and we reflect, have a think about this parable that Jesus told in Luke chapter 12. It's the story about a rich man whose land produced an abundant crop. And his response to this blessing was to build bigger barns to store his grain, saying to himself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink and be merry. But God said to him, you fool this very night, your life will be demanded from you. At first glance, this story can seem like a critique of wealth. But when we look deeper, we see it's not about wealth per se. It's about the human heart. It's about what we place our security in and whether we are rich towards God. Jesus isn't condemning planning or prosperity, but the illusion of self-sufficiency. That's the real thing here. C.S. Lewis in The Abolition of Man talks about what he calls men without chests. He's referring to a person who in pursuing only reason and intellect has lost the very thing that makes him fully human, a moral and spiritual centre. Lewis describes this kind of man as one who has cut himself off from the deeper realities that give life meaning. Like the rich man in our passage, he builds bigger barns for his intellect, his accomplishments, his power, but inside, he's probably hollow. In the same way, the rich fool in Jesus' parable has been building his life without realising the deeper realities of God's provision and purpose. He thinks the abundance of his crops means security for his soul. But he's forgot something fundamental. It's God, not wealth, that sustains us. Jesus' parable is set against the backdrop of a harvest. Now think about this. In ancient times, a good harvest was seen as a sign of God's blessings. They couldn't just ship in cucumbers from Morocco and tomatoes from New Zealand and peaches from Arizona. They had to plant and water, but they can't make the crops grow. They would till the ground, but the rain, the sun, these things are in God's control. The rich man should have recognised that the harvest wasn't just his to store away. It was a gift from God, meant to be shared and stewarded. In this, Jesus reminds us that while we work and plan, our ultimate provision comes from God. And so the question is, what do we do with that provision? Do we, like the rich man, hoard it, building bigger barns for ourselves? Or do we open our hands in gratitude, knowing that everything we have comes from God and belongs to him? C.S. Lewis, again, once said, Every faculty you have, your power of thinking or of moving your limbs from moment to moment is given to you by God. We have What we have is a gift, not something we are entitled to. It is a radical way of thinking that challenges the individualism and consumerism of our culture. Now in the second half of this passage, Jesus says something surprising. He shifts the story of the, from the rich fool to addressing his disciples about worry. He says, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food and the body more than clothes. Isn't that interesting? Jesus goes from talking about abundance to talking about anxiety. Why? Because these two are more connected than we realise. The rich fool thought his wealth would give him peace. But Jesus shows us that real peace cannot come from our efforts to control or secure our lives. In fact, the more we try to control, the more anxious we become. Jesus invites us to see our anxiety 
like the rich man's hoarding, comes from believing that we are in control, when in reality we are not. He points us to the birds and the flowers who do not labour or spin, and yet God feeds and clothes them. C.S. Lewis has another powerful image that helps us here. In The Problem of Pain, he writes about the world as something we must receive as gift, rather than something we can possess. He says that as long as we think our, we own our lives, our resources and our future, we will live in a state of constant tension, trying to keep what can never really be ours. But if we see the world as a gift from God, a gift meant to be enjoyed and shared, then we can live in peace and freedom. The rich fool saw his wealth as something to possess, but in doing so he missed the point. His very life was on loan from God. When we recognise that everything we have is a gift, it frees us from the illusion of control and the burden of worry. So, what does it mean to be rich towards God? It means recognising that our ultimate wealth is not in the things we can store in barns or bank accounts, but in the generosity of God's grace. To be rich towards God is to live a posture of gratitude, dependence and trust. Jesus calls us to a radical way of living, not in anxiety over what we don't have, but in gratitude for what God has already given. Not in fear of tomorrow, but in trust that the God who clothes the lilies and feeds the birds will care for us. Harvest is a time where we gather in the fruits of the earth. But Jesus calls us to consider a different kind of harvest. A harvest of the heart. Is it anxiety driven by the need for control and security? Or is it peace born from the trust that God is your provider? C.S. Lewis, finally reflecting on the goodness of God, once said, We are not necessarily doubting that God will do the best for us. We are wondering how painful the best will turn out to be. Even when God's ways seem difficult or uncertain, we can trust in his goodness. The true harvest we seek is not in the barns we build, but in the richness of our relationship with God. So as we celebrate harvest today, let us remember that everything we have comes from God's goodness. And in response, may we open our hearts, our hands and our lives to be rich towards God, trusting in his provision and care. Amen. of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand of the Lord, the Holy One is here. And so we pray using the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So a few notices before our final song this morning. Uh, we have got all the usual things running. Toddlers on Monday, morning prayer on Tuesday at 9.30, our Romans Bible study at 11.15. On Wednesday, we have got midweek communion at 9.30. At uh, 10.15, sorry, is the Romans Bible study. On Wednesday, it's midweek communion at 9.30. On Thursday, it's toddlers again at 10 o'clock. And on Friday, it's our coffee morning from 10.30. And then this 
following Sunday, which is the 20th, is normal Sunday services in the morning and then our youth group in the evening from 5 till 7 at church. For now, though, our final song, Let Everything That Has Breath Praise the Lord. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I do hope you have a wonderful rest of the day, whatever you are up to. I hope that you have enjoyed our harvest service today and a harvest blessing. May the blessing of the God who cycles the seasons and swells the grain go with us. May the blessing of the Son who harvests and kneads and breaks the bread go with us. And may the blessing of the Spirit who challenges us to a just sharing of earth's harvest go with us now and in the week to head. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.